You're watching HCAM TV. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News Live. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy here to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News is live every Thursday from 6.30 to 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News Live, we have the latest COVID-19 updates from Health Director Sean McAuliffe and School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, plus a whole lot more. But first, we are joined by... Cincha Franca and Cheryl Peralt to discuss their Hope Through Community book launch, which will be taking place live on HCAM tomorrow night at seven. Cincha and Cheryl, how are you today? Great, thank you. Thank you, Tom, for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Tom, in the studio there. And thank you for having us on the news this evening. Yep, I'm right in the studio for sure. <laughs> uh, so you got the uh, Hope Through Community book launch coming up tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to have it on HCAM. So uh, tell us about the Hope Through Community book as well as the book launch. What can we expect tomorrow night? Cheryl? Shall I go? Okay. I go here, here, after. Yeah, here is the book. We have yeah. the book, Hope <laughs> Through Community, Words and Images in Response to a Global Pandemic. And uh, this book got started uh, at the time of uh, the global pandemic quarantine, uh, right about uh, April, March. Since March, you, yeah, uh, March. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> when you have a lockdown. Uh, <laughs> had an idea uh, in her mind to get started with a book. And this is our second one together because Cynthia had an idea the first time too with the Hoppington 300th anniversary. So. Uh, between April and November, we put this book together in trying to think about what people in our community uh, have to say through the art of poetry and story about hope, something, a collection that we could offer uh, through community art to people about this particular time of global pandemic uh, for this year. And we got it done just in time so that we could uh, end the year 2020 and even have a book launch. And granted, last time when we celebrated uh, Hopkinton with our book, um, we had a gala event at the Senior Center with over 100 people there. It was very exciting. We thought we might be doing the same this time, but yeah. unfortunately not. We're all being in our homes, but that makes it kind of special and interesting on Zoom, thanks to HCAM TV, uh, because you'll get to hear from uh, 34, correct, Cynthia? Yeah, tomorrow we have 34 um, writers. They are speaking, reading poems, reading stories, and also some performances of songs. Right, in their very own home. So that makes it uh, unique, right, Cynthia? I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add about it. Uh, yeah, you have some, about the book, you have some photos from the families from the project, the Front, Front Steps project. You have some families from Hopkinton, Framingham, um, and South Row. So we have some photos in our book as well. So uh, it's, it's, you can buy the book in our website. I cannot, can I tell about our website? Mm -hmm. All the updates you can see in our website is uh, hoptontruepoetrybook.com. So you can buy the book there. You can talk with us through email. So you can, can be uh, like aware of everything is happening about this book and the project. So you're almost done. If they have a lot of books, you have just you are selling a lot of books. People are like very excited about the the project, so you are very happy. Thank you for the seven two writers too. They are in the book. Yeah, wow. we're almost sold out with the first edition, right? 
I, yeah, I have like a few left. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably going for the second printing. And we also have some in Hopkinton drug. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so this started uh, pretty much right when the pandemic started. And you said you have 72 writers in the book? Yes. Yeah, let me tell you this story. Lately. I don't know if you have a lot of time, but it uh, <laughs> was one day <laughs> after the International Day of Happiness was March 21st. Uh, I, you are so overwhelmed with the lockdowns and everyone at home. And then I decided to do like a little note card uh, in my neighborhood, like saying like nice words and let's, we are doing this together. Let's be together, be strong. And I put like anonymously, <laughs> I put it in, in each in mailbox. I put the, this note like with bright colors. And the end of the day, one lady from my neighborhood for the Facebook, she said, oh my God, I need this so much. You have no idea how you help me. And I shared this with Cheryl and she said, oh, Oh, that's very nice to do for you. Let's do a book of hope because positive attitudes, positive actions can impact people. People can share their stories. And then we start to, to promote the book in April. Thank you for Educan TV also for being our partner since April. They are helping us with interviews and promoting the book. That's awesome. Thank you. And we got a lot of responses, not only from local community, but uh, because we have a website. And since you posted on the website, we were hearing from people outside of the country as well. So we have people from across the country and some from other countries also. Which was interesting exciting. because in April 10th, I think I updated the website. And I think a few days after came the first submission from Australia. I like, oh my God, from Australia, that's wow. so cool. So yeah, and then you have more than 120 submissions. You have also Brazil and also you have Rwanda. So you have writers from all over the world. Yes. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, I look forward to uh, giving this a read and we're certainly looking forward to the Hope Through Community Book Launch Program airing tomorrow night on HCAM. Cynthia and Cheryl, thanks so much for joining us here on HCAM News Live today. And uh, we can't wait for tomorrow night. Thank, Thank you, you, you so much. We look forward to seeing you there. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, All right. Uh, all Goodbye. right, that was Cheryl Peral and Cynthia Franca, and you can catch them on the Hope Through Community Book Launch airing on HCAM TV tomorrow night at 7 p.m. A big thank you uh, to Cynthia uh, as well as Cheryl for joining us here today. Well, the select board recently received a COVID-19 update from Health Director Sean McAuliffe and also approved the addition of a new health department position. Here's a look at what happened. Hopkinton Health Director Sean McAuliffe gave an update on the current COVID-19 situation at this week's select board meeting. Um, I don't think it's any surprise or any, um, yeah, it, it's, it's no surprise that we've seen an incredible surge over the last um, two months. Um, we have 276 total cases uh, today um, at this time. Um, you know, we, we just had 264 yesterday. So we're seeing significant increases each day. We have 47 active cases, 260, 216 recovered, and um, no additional deaths. So we're still at 13. Um, you know, we've seen 23 new cases since last Wednesday. And, um, you know, as I've reported, you know, we had 140 cases from March to uh, September 20th. And we've had, um, we've had over 140 cases um, since September 21st to um, today. And I say over, 140 because there we know that there are cases that haven't been added to our count yet. Um, that said, um, the positivity rate is increasing in town. We went up from a 1.55% uh, on 1119. Um, last week we were at a 2.59. I expect us to stay pretty close. Um, to that number as we go into um, tomorrow. Um, 
on a kind of like on a positive note, we've had um, less than five COVID-19 hospitalizations in this most recent wave. There was some positive news as far as school community spread. You know, one of the things that Casey and I continue to, you know, impress upon people is to date, we still have no evidence of school or community spread. We've been able to track um, every case coming into town um, and, and everything that's presented itself in school. And, and we're doing a really good job at containing the illness. It's just, you know, we have individuals uh, contracting illness at work and then we have spread in the home. But because Casey and I are reaching out um, to virtually every resident um, within, you know, a day to two days, we've been able to, you know, really confine it to the home and not let it get out, um, you know, spreading throughout the, the neighborhood community. With the increase in cases, Sean had a message for residents to reduce spread and also commented on the vaccination process. Um, and then the remainder of our cases are coming from, you know, it's from social ga gatherings at restaurants, um, functions outside of the home, but all of these activities are happening outside of Hawkington. So, you know, we've just been trying to impress upon our residents just you know, if you're if you're participating in any activities, you know, be it sports, dining out, whatever, outside of town, you you just got to give it a second thought because there's a lot of risk out there. Um, you know, no, I was speaking to Norman about uh, you know, where are we in the vaccination process? You know, Casey has updated and modified our emergency dispensing site plan to address the COVID-19 vaccinations we've been bringing in. We've got, you know, generators, tents, we have vaccination stations, we have all this equipment coming in that we paid for through grants. Um, we have updated our plan. Um, and right now it looks like we should expect vaccines to be delivered to our department in the spring. And that's when we'll be starting our mass, uh, our mass distribution. Town manager Norman Cavallo also made a request for the addition of a public health agent. Again, I'm respectfully requesting that you support this request uh, for an additional position in the uh, health services department. Uh, we need the help now, uh, and this position can be paid for from the approved budget. There's the inspectional aspect of the work, which is diff which is um, separate from the work that Sean does. Right. It covers, yeah, it covers the the food service permits. Uh, they also join with the inspectional team for our permitting process. They inspect restaurants, school cafeterias, the retail food stores, food handling and processing. We get a lot of these one day uh, permits. Uh, in town, which is good. And we need to have somebody in place to do that. They will inspect nursing homes. Uh, we know why it's important to do that based on our experience with COVID-19, recreational camps, um, septic water pumped trucks. They will also be the one responding when we have a food recall in town and any other environmental health issues. We're hearing a lot about that at Legacy Farms. They'll also conduct the annual inspections uh, for animal and barns, kennels, pools, beaches, um, as well as investigate any alleged environmental nuisance that is brought to the town's attention. The board unanimously approved the decision to add a public health agent. So there you have it, the health update to the select board, which took place at this past week's uh, meeting. And uh, you can see that meeting over on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAM TV. We're going to take a quick time out, a whole lot more ahead on HCAM News Live. Stay tuned.
supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And welcome back to HCAM News. And this week, we asked you, what is your favorite holiday or Christmas movies? And we got some great updates. We will get to those a little bit later in the newscast. And uh, if you're watching right now, feel free to comment on our YouTube or Facebook live stream, your favorite Christmas or holiday movie. We would certainly love to include uh, your thoughts on the best holiday or Christmas movie out there. Well, uh, this past Wednesday night, uh, we had a brand new edition of the Hopkinton Hangout Hour, which you can actually catch every Monday at 2 p.m. as well as every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And on that edition of the Hopkinton Hangout Hour, uh, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, the school superintendent, joined us to give a school COVID-19 update. So we have a little clip from that, but right now you're just taking a glimpse of our live programming schedules, a whole lot of great live programs every week right here on the HCAM channels. But here's a look of Dr. Carol Cavanaugh on this past Wednesday's Hopkinton Hangout Hour talking about the latest COVID-19 news in the Hopkinton schools. You know, there are people who are wondering, well, you know, why are you remote this week? Is it because you have that sort of panic in your heart? And the answer to that is absolutely no. Uh, we, we started talking about this maybe two or three weeks ago, and we considered a couple of things. One of those things that was really important to us was the governor's travel order. So, you know, people like to travel and be with their family and friends over the Thanksgiving holiday, but upon their return, they would need to be tested. So in that situation, we were really not sure how many people were going to be able to come to school, you know, never mind, you know, just willing, but, but there's that whole thing about you're just not allowed to do it until you have a negative COVID test. Um, and then the other thing that we wondered about, and this really came in with really nice collaboration, I think, with the Department of Public Health with Sean McAuliffe and Casey Morrow in town. So, you know, thinking about the incubation period, if there were people who were, you know, eating and masks off and kind of, you know, really socializing with family and friends on Thanksgiving, if you look about a week out, you know, and people might start testing positive, these would be the days that that would be happening. And one of the things I always worry about is we have kids who are considered to be close contact. So a child who's done nothing more than come to school, but maybe sat next to a student who has tested positive. At the elementary levels, that's not such a big deal because we can take a whole class and just say, you'll be remote for however many days and then bring that class back while the rest of the school functions normally. But at the high school, for example, it's very challenging because a student could go to English class, class math class, science class, social studies, and create four or five close contacts in each one of those places, or maybe just one or maybe none. But at the end of the day, after we think about lunch and busing and all of that, we could end up with 30 kids who have to sit home just because they're close contacts. So really that was the second reason why we shut our doors this week. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I don't know, I don't know if you have like a special line in to Dr. Fauci or anything like that, but I'll be honest with you. I really understood it you surveyed the school community to see what was going to be happening over the Thanksgiving break. And with that information, decided that it was best to take a week to see if there was any type of outbreak. And I, I'll be honest with you, I said, 
why one week when they say you have to quarantine for 14 days? And then just this past week, the CDC is talking about reducing the length of time that you need for a quarantine. And now they're thinking like they're recommending in certain situations from seven to 10 days. And if you think about Thanksgiving, seven, eight, nine, 10, that's 10 days before school starts. So I think that you would probably would get a pretty good indication by then if something was arising. Yes, and it's hard to know if today's, I mean, you, I'm sure the whole world knows that today was the day that we had the highest count ever in the United States. Um, I'm sorry, in Massachusetts. So, you know, you get to that place where you say, is that a result of Thanksgiving? And that's really the kind of planning that we had done. So when we had 4,613 cases today in Massachusetts, you know, I don't know if that's a result of Thanksgiving, but logic would dictate that it was. You know, I don't have scientific evidence. Um, and that's really the kind of thinking that we were doing as we planned around this. So hopefully by next Sunday, the if there's sort of a preponderance of positive cases as a result of Thanksgiving, we'll know who those people are and those will be people who learn remotely while their peers will come into school. Well, there you have it, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh on the Hopkinton Hangout Hour, which of course you can catch every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on HCAM TV. Certainly a great up date there. And it's uh, great to hear that things are going well in the schools as of right now. And I'll knock on some wood here, not too much spread at all. So that is certainly good to hear. Well, we recently asked, what is your fav uh, favorite holiday or Christmas movie? And we got some great responses. So let's take a look at those responses. And a big thank you to everyone who did indeed respond. Kim says, Elf, that is a awesome movie. I love it. And our own Bob Hamilton said uh, Griswold Christmas, which is Christmas Vacation is the actual title, but that is my personal favorite. And uh, Alicia says, love actually. Die Hard is a close second. Die Hard's a Christmas movie, by the way. I agree with that. And it's a good one. Sarah says, love actually. Our own Mike Tarosian said, die hard. And Connie says, white Christmas. Some great entries there. And uh, those are all terrific holiday or Christmas movies. So thanks to everyone who sent in their response. A couple of events to tell you about coming up in the community. The 32nd annual Hopkinton Card and Gift Open House is going to be mostly virtual this year. And the festivities start on Saturday, December 5th at 10 a.m. And you can check out the schedule right here. There'll also be some events on December 8th and the 10th, the 14th and the 16th, as well as the 20th. And you can get another glimpse at the schedule on our website, hcam.tv. The 32nd annual holiday open house at Hopkinton card and gift. And we also got some news today from the Hopkinton center for the arts. After 15 years, Chris Waldman is moving on. She was the longtime co-director of the HCA and certainly did a lot for the HCA community and did a great job as the co-director. And they wrote in the, uh, Story in the press release, uh, Dare HCA friends and supporters, I am writing to share the news that Chris Waldman has decided to leave the HCA as its co-director at the end of the year after 15 years of dedicated service to expanding the reach of the arts, first as board chair and executive director of the Cultural Arts Alliance, and then in her joint partnership of the HCA with Kelly Grill, Chris' positive impact is undeniable, and it certainly is. You can catch the full uh, story about Chris Waldman uh, moving on after 15 years over at our website, hcam.tv, and we'll certainly have more on that in the very near future. A couple community events coming up to tell you about. Arts and Bloom still going on at the HCA. You can find more details about that at our website, hcam.tv. They also have a free online car design workshop on Saturday, December 5th from 3 to 4 p.m. And check out the Hopkinton Women's Club website. They're doing all kinds of great things to raise money for their wonderful scholarship fund. And uh, we have the TVL Fall 1 All-Stars. Unfortunately, we don't have time to 
name them all, but here's a look at those all-stars. And we certainly talked about it on HCAM Sports Live a couple of weeks ago, which you could catch every Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. And don't forget, if your kid is looking to play some Little League Baseball or Softball registration deadline is January 31st. Head over to HopkintonLittleLeague.org and click register now. And also, uh, we are very grateful that Officer Phil Powers is okay. Uh, During the storm this past uh, Monday, which featured a lot of wind and rain, a tree fell on his car, on his cruiser, uh, causing significant damage to the cruiser. Fortunately, Officer Powers is A-OK. That photo from the Hopkinton Police Department. And also, there's a great uh, photo from Mike Terosian as the Garden Club decorated the Veterans Memorial Gazebo at the Town Common. They did a great job, as always. And another photo here, a reminder, the Boy Scouts Christmas tree sale is going on at the CVS parking lot. This is the Hopkinton Hillers High School baseball team helping unload those trees just a couple of weeks ago. That sale is going on right now, so go pick up your Christmas tree. And also all kinds of government meetings coming up next week on HCAM TV. Monday, December 7th at 7.30, we'll have the planning board. Tuesday, December 8th at 7 p.m., we'll have the conservation commission. And then on HCAM Ed, December 10th, which is a Thursday at 7 p.m., we will have the school committee meeting. And you could certainly find all the meetings at the town website, hopkintonma.gov. Well, believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. We'll be back next Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Coming up next, it's Hopkinton's favorite party planner, Terry Malisi for everyone at HCAM. I'm Tom Nappy. Thanks for joining us. Take care, be well, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody.